Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Wildflower Will's YouTube channel. It's Monday night, which means that it is cast on day. You guys were all voting for a sweater pattern. What sweater is going to be the sweater for April? So we'll talk a little bit about that. I've got a lot of projects to share with you that I've been working on this week. It's been a great week. Good knitting week. So grab some knitting, get comfy, and we're going to chat for about an hour here um, about what I've been working on. And then we'll catch up with a little bit about what you have been working on. Hi, Cindy. Happy Monday. So let's talk about what you all were voting for. I picked two sweaters this morning. Summer, short sleeve-ish summer tops. Hi, Linnell. Hey, Liz. Okay, I'm going to see if I can... Pull the pictures up here on my phone. Um, and then just in case, if you didn't vote or didn't have time to vote, I know for some of us, Monday was still a holiday. Hope everybody had a nice Easter. If that's a holiday that you celebrate. Okay, let me see if I can get all of these. This is, um, oh my gosh. I just lost it. Okay. Anchors. I'm like, what in the world? Anchors summer shirt. And I believe this one is a petite knits. And it's been out for a couple of years because somebody said they knitted a couple of summers ago. That is a really cute one. Short sleeve. It's knit with a DK yarn. Looks really fun. The other one that I thought looked really interesting is this one here. This was called Neela. And I would have to go look and see who the designer was. It's somebody that you probably all have heard about. So this one here is an option of doing a little short cap sleeve, or you can do the three-quarter length sleeve. You could probably make it a full sleeve. But look at all that detail on the body. It looks really, really fun. So those were the two you all were voting for. There was a lot of votes. We had about, we had 124 votes in total. And it definitely leaned one way, you guys. There was, oh, hi, Jerry. You like the anchors? There was a lot of people. Oh, yes, Louise. Moonstruck Knits. Yes, Natasha Hornby. I think it was. Um, oh, Susanna, you voted. <laughs> so, yeah, both good, de lovely designers. I'm sure you have seen designs from both of them before. Um, okay, what you all were saying as you were voting. There was a couple of people who had said they had knit the anchors, and it was a really great knit. Somebody had just bought the Neela pattern yesterday. Isn't that fun that we were thinking the same on the same vibe here? And there was some people thought anchors looked a little more summery. Maybe the shorter sleeves helped with that. Some people thought the Neela was a little more form fitted. Maybe not a good summer top. Maybe you want something anchors looked a little more loosey and flowy. Maybe a little more summery. Anchor is also um, DK weight. Neela is fingering weight. So <laughs> definitely a difference there with the weighted yarn. Fingering weight sweater with three quarter length sleeves might take a little, well, well, will take a little longer than a DK sweater. So there was a lot, there was a lot of options, like a lot of people's opinions, which, you know, they all, all sounded very valid. You know, a DK, DK will knit up faster, but will it be a little warmer? I don't know. Or maybe it's one that you just wear on a cooler night or it's a spring or fall-ish end of summer, not middle of summer wear. Um, oh, there you go. Jocelyn just exactly said that DK weight is not a summer yarn weight. Fingering is better. Well, I was also thinking, I thought if I cast on that one, maybe with the DK yarn, maybe just making full length sleeves and maybe not making it a summer top, but making it just like a winter sweater. That I could be possible. Um, oh, 
<laughs> Jocelyn, you, you're swatching for a lace top? Okay. But no, that's a very valid point, really and truly. Uh, let's see. So anyways, yeah, lots of things. So it was really the winning, the winning pattern had 88% of the votes. I was, I was surprised. I thought it would have been a little more even. And, and when it, um, the beginning of the voting, it was very even. And then later in the afternoon and tonight, um, it used, um, it definitely, it definitely, all the votes were going one way. Oh, see, Diane says she uses sport weight, which is good for all seasons. Um, Sally says it'll be good for fall. So I think it did, it just depends on personal preference, right? Or maybe where you live, how warm, how cool it gets in the evenings, all that kind of thing. Um, but I'm willing to try a DK wool sweater with short sleeves. And even if it's short sleeve, um, like both, like even the, the, the Neela was three quarters, but you could probably just do short sleeves on it as well. Right. Um, a short sleeve DK sweater. Um, you could wear it all year round, right? Just put a cardigan over top of it, <laughs> knit a short sleeve sweater and then put a cardigan, knit, knit a cardigan to go over top. I mean, there's lots of ways, um, around it, but, um, let me tell you. Which one won? So what I said, we had 124 votes, 88, um, no, 71%. 71% of the votes went to the winning sweater. So the pattern that I'm going to cast on for my first cast on in April, which is first of the month is a sweater, is going to be, insert your own pretend drum roll here. I need to get a little drum. <laughs> that's what I should be looking. Maybe Scarlet. Let's maybe buy Scarlet a drum. Her mom will love me for that and keep one for me. Um, anyways, okay. It'd be a good fall for fall. Absolutely. The one I'm casting on is the Anchor Summer shirt. So you guys that have knit it, there was a couple of people who said they had knit it. Um, I don't know if somebody had said that it had been in their queue for a while, but they hadn't knit it. Um, that's the one. That's the one. Oh, okay. So Mary, you're making a DK weight cotton blend for summer. See, and I haven't tried a, I don't think I have tried a DK cotton. I know for me, and we, and I've talked about this a lot in the past that a DK, oh no, 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 no. A cotton worsted is a little bit too heavy for me for summer, for like middle of the summer. It would be fine as a spring, um, but middle of the summer, um, definitely a little warmer than I would like. So I'm interested to try, I would try DK cotton and just to see if that would, um, be a little different, but, oh, Bernadette, you're just finishing the yolk of her salty air tea. That is wonderful. <laughs> you will not see that for me tonight. <laughs> not, I didn't even pick up my salty air tea, but I do have a lot of things to show you guys. So, okay, you guys, so anchor. So let's talk just a little bit. Do you want me to show you? Let me see if I can find my picture here. Actually, oh, hold on, you guys. Let me see. So let's just go. Let me go. Let's see if I can find it here on Ravelry. Hmm. Give me a sec here. So the okay this okay hold on i'm i'm searching another way sorry if this is noisy as i type anchors summer shirt so this one so there were some comments that said that this one would be a quick and easy because the detail around the yoke is pretty simple right it's um and it's probably a great way to add in your increases in that pattern. So let me see here. Okay. I just can't see my screen now, but hopefully you can see what I'm holding up. So it said, okay, so it says DK and it says 20 stitches in stockinette stitch. They suggest a four millimeter needle. It goes from sizes extra small all the way up to a 5XL. So good size range there. And what does it says? It says it's a circular yoke, crew neck, 
in the round, one piece, ribbed, seamless, short sleeve, top down, pattern written. So, and it says, Anchor Summer Shirt is worked from the top down. The yoke is worked in sections of rib with increases in the round, followed by classic raglan increases when the stockinette stitch section begins. The sleeves are worked at the end, either on double pointed needles or circular needles with magic loop. Anchor Summer Shirt has no finishing other than weaving in the ends. Always a bonus. Uh, begin by working out a swatch to determine which needle size you need to achieve the correct gauge. Note that the swatch needs to be washed and blocked. Okay, so um, it's designed to have a, a between zero and two inches of positive ease, meaning it is designed to be zero to two inches larger in circumference than your widest upper body measurement. Okay. So I think this, I'm hoping this is going to knit up really quick. So I like this on the Ravelry page. There's all of this information is here even before you, um, so you can read all of this, all of this info before you purchase the pattern. So that's exciting. Okay. Okay. Hold on, you guys. I'm going to come back here so I can actually see you. Okay. There we go. Um, I'm excited. Oh, Sherry, I think the DK top really suits people who work in, oh, air conditioned spaces, particularly if it's short sleeve um, or out of cooler fabric. See, that is also a good point. I mean, yes, if you're in air conditioning a lot, you don't really need to worry too much about the weight, do you? Anyways, that's it. Super cute. I like the ribbing. Um, it should, should be fairly straightforward, I think. So excellent voting, you guys. I'm really happy about that. So let's take a quick look at the the, uh, the yarn I thought I would, I would use for this. This is some really, really, really old stash. And I am guessing that this is DK. Okay, so look at this. So... Every time I look at this, I want to say hello. But <laughs> Hilo? I'm not sure how that's actually pronounced. But um, Dale of Norway, Dale Garn. This is some really, really old sash. So this, I this is so old, you guys, that I don't remember where it came from. And I can remember like 99% of my yarn where it came from. All I know is I did not buy it new. It came from somebody's stash. I found it at a thrift store. Somebody gave it to me. It was in a bag of donated yarn that maybe came somewhere and I grabbed it from there. I don't really know. Um, um, I just know I did not get it when I was in Norway because it's probably way, way older than that. Um, the label on it says 1938 to 1998. So what are the odds that this came? This was actually packaged in 1998. <laughs> Maybe good because I've had it for at least 14 years. No, 12. More than 12. More than 12. Anyways, it is probably time that it gets knit. So does somebody... Somebody said sport weight. Was this, um, oh, it's sport weight, Dawn. This is sport weight. That'll be perfect. Sport weight, DK weight. Um, I think it'll be good. It'll, it, I'm hoping it'll work. I can just fudge the needle size and we'll get it to work. I have had this in my stash forever and ever. I moved it from where I lived previously to this house. That's how I know that it's approximately how old it is. Um, it's a hundred percent wool. And so this is just a, oh, it's like a, it's, I think it's a beige. I was looking at it. It depends what light it's in. I think it's beige. I was going to say when I looked at it earlier, I thought it was more like a light gray, but I think it's a beige. And, um, Yes, Dawn, that's right. It will make a looser gauge and be cooler. And that's the thing. I don't want to knit it tight. I'd rather it be knit looser for a summer sweater. 
So you do have a little bit more airflow and not be quite so warm, but I'm hoping it's a hundred percent wool. So I'm hoping that I will like a hundred percent wool better than I've liked my previous cotton summer tops that I've knit. So what does this say on here? It's saying a two and a half to a three to three and a half millimeter needle. And it's a hundred meters. I've got 12 of these balls and I brought up a couple extra colors. I have a couple of these chocolate brown and then this is like a mustard yellow. I think there was four of these and I think there might have been a couple of navies as well. Anyway, so I've had a good, uh, um, I've had, yeah, I, I don't know what I'll do with the leftovers, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. I had briefly saw, I'm like, oh, maybe I should wait and keep this for like a, a long sleeve sweater, but I don't think so. I think I'll just try it and use it and get it out of my stash and knit it up and wear it. So, oh, Dawn says, according to Ravelry, this is a sport weight. Perfect. I was just kind of going by the what the needle size said on the ball band and... Did it say, oh, and it says on here, 24 stitches equals 10 centimeters. So I was thinking that was in the DK range. So I think this is what I'm going to use. Fun summer top, use up some yarn that's been in my stash forever and ever that needs to be knit. Hello, Paula. Okay, so let me show you some of the things that I've been working on. I feel like I've been working on a lot of things this, um, this week. So I'm just going to grab, I have a pile of them. So they're in no particular order. Oh, oh, wait, 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 you guys. Okay, did anybody notice my whiteboard? I know it's a little bit farther away and it's kind of hard to see, but can you see? There is printing on it. I, hi Sam, I updated the whiteboard. <laughs> so, it is on here. Now, I do know I was kind of trying to alternate pink and green, pink and green, just to, I don't know, make it look pretty. But the green does not show up very well. So I think I'm going to have to find a black marker and I'm going to re rewrite that. But I'm updated. So now the next step is I just have to transfer it all to Ravelry. But, you know, one step at a time. So the whiteboard is up here. I added my Sock Madness socks on there. So these socks, these are my retreat socks. These were my second cast on of the year, January 8th. And here they sit. First sock, but that's okay because I have pulled them out. I got, I did a little bit of work on them. I pulled them out and looked. I had, I had like, I had like all the, not the hard part, but the most, um, where you have to pay attention part done. I had already did the heel. I had done all the gusset decreases and I was just back down to 64 stitches. So I just have to knit the foot. So I don't know, somewhere I did all of the, um, oh, thanks Diane. Uh oh, now I just lost, I think I lost my marker. Did I? I think I did. Okay. Anyways. Um, I will find that later. But anyways, look, I did, I worked a little bit on this here and got here a little bit past the decreases. So, um, just round and round. So I'm just going to pick this up and get down to the toe decreases, do the toes and cast on. So I did the whole thing on the little nine inch circular. I did, did a heel flap and gusset. Just did a vanilla sock, my super simple cuff down sock pattern. Super easy. Um, so now yeah, I'll just keep going. I will have to find UPNs to do the toes because you can't do the toes on the nine inch circular. But that's why I do keep stitch markers on here, even though I'm just doing the foot. So I know where to start decreasing for the toes. So I will have to find this one. I, I, I heard it fall and hit the floor, so I'll have to find it and put it back on. Um, What else do I have to show you? Oh, this one. Okay, this was my shawl. Let me refer to my whiteboard and let me tell you when I cast this on. This is, 
I have this whiteboard. I better make use of it now, you guys. So remember this yarn? This was, you were voting between two types of sock yarn for this. This was a hand dyed and it was called Sour Cherries, Cherry Pits. I think it was called Cherry Pits. And it was up against a Noro. And this one, this has been voted for a couple of times, well, at least once or twice before, and it never got picked. This time it did, and I'm so happy it did. So let's see. I think this was a, yep, first cast on in February, February 5th. And guys, I am loving this. The colors are so fun, and they really do look like cherry pits or when you, when you pet cherries. Um, the inside color of a cherry. It is. It's so fun. Look at this. So I did put a stitch marker on here. This is where I was last week after we chatted. So you can see how much. Got a fair amount done. Once you get to this point, doing a boomerang shaped shawl, it really slows down, right? Because your your width is really starting to increase. Um. So it is. So there it is. Oh, look, see? It's starting to get bigger. Paula says, when you transfer to Ravelry, take a photo with the project in the bag so you know what bag to look for when I can't find it. <laughs> Very true. I did a little organizing up here today, and I did find a project in a bag, and I picked it up, and I'm like, what is this? It's green, chunky, and I'm like, chunky weight. I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that one or go back through Instagram and look at some pictures and see what it is. So anyways, this is super, super fun. Just garter stitch, asymmetrical. It's a two row pattern. It's um, knit night proof. You can, you can look at your, your stitches and know which row you're on. One row is a shaping row. One row is an increased row. Super, super simple. Always fun and very wearable. So this, since I just have one skein, it's going to just be a basically a scarf, a one skein shawl, and it'll be nice for winter inside your coat. Um, let's see, got a couple other things to show you. All right, remember my Karen Cakes seed stitch scarf that I'm just knitting this because I have all of these Karen Cake balls and I. Just need to knit them up and use them, make them into something that can be gifted, can be donated. And I like having a simple scarf on the go. I like having the asymmetrical shawl. I like having the scarf. One of those times, you know, like this was, I took this to Easter dinner with me because I could visit with everybody. Um, it's seed stitch. You can tell if you make a mistake, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really easy. So it's kind of a no brainer project to work on. So Karen cakes, this was 80% acrylic, 20% wool came from Michael's love this yarn. <laughs> Mary, you're so funny. Yes. You guys all know Charlotte. Oh my gosh. Don't get me started. It's a, it's a scarf. It's a scarf, but if you like the word shawlette, you can call it a shawlette. Maybe that just makes it sound a little fancier than a scarf. Um, this is called Blue Blueberry Kiwi, and it's just shades of blues and greens. Really, really fun. The stuff knits up wonderfully. It's always a good go-to project, you know, if you have to um, knit for somebody. It's a gift. So I was trying to do a color a week is what I was doing. So it started out with this dark green and then it went to this lighter green. And then this week I wanted to get the blue done. And I got the blue done and then just carried on into a little bit with green. And, oh, that's so funny. I'm like, everything shows up so much I don't know, better um, when you look at it in the camera. I was like, as soon as I held it up, I'm like, okay, what is this little blippy thing um, that I had not noticed? Anyways, it's just the, like a thicker piece in the, in, the, uh, in the yarn. It's not a knot, but anyways, it'll be fine. Once it's wrapped around, keeping somebody warm, you're not even going to know. So this is coming along great. It's getting 
nice and long. So I'm just going to do the whole ball and make it super long and put it in the gift basket. So I was working on that. Now you guys, okay, are you ready? I have a finish to show you. Now, I know, it is it is finished, but it's my finish that took me forever and ever and ever, but at least it's done. I <laughs> My sock madness sock, sock number two is done, toes done, ends are woven, done, done, done. So I know it took me a little while to get these guys done. These were so fun. So this was Sock Madness round one socks. And it, the pattern is called Walk the Line because they have their illusion. So when you chip them, can you kind of see this dark line here? Um, so now I can officially say I have completed two pairs of socks in Sock Madness. This year I did the qualifier and round one. So every year, well, except last year, <laughs> I was going to say every year I get a little bit better. Last year I did not. Actually, last year I went backwards, but that's okay. You're going to have years like that, right? So, but this is the most getting two full completed pairs of socks from the sock madness competition. This is the first time that has happened. So, and, and as you guys all know, so I, I was out of the competition because I did not get this one done in time to move on. So that is just going to be my, uh, <laughs> that is <laughs> just reading Sherry's comment. So next year, that's going to be my goal every year. I'm just going to kind of just I put the goal a little bit, and so next year will be to get round one done and move on and compete into round two because I think that would be so fun. But, and you guys will just have to um, have to put up with me rattling on about the excitement of Sock Madness for just a little bit longer next year. Anyway, so there is Sock One. Just look at it on the, on the Sock Blocker. Look, so, I, I mean... <laughs> On a blocker, not on a blocker. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? But look, two socks are done. They they were so fun. I know, oops, apparently did not weave this one in, Sherry. Sorry, don't get too excited. <laughs> I know, Sherry is like, ends woven in too amazing. I have socks from two years ago that still don't have the ends in. Oh, Sherry, I don't know. I just wove this in in a moment of I don't know what because I have socks that I wear. I've been wearing them for years. And the there is a tail in the toe. So every time I put it in, I can feel the tail. But obviously it does not bother me because I've never taken the time to actually weave it in. Nobody knows, right? So anyways, two pairs of, that's like two pairs of socks done this year, which is really not something to brag about because that's two pairs and we're now in tape. <laughs> but not bad for me. Not bad for me. Um, Liz, I finished. I know. I, I know. I finished, finished. Exactly. So the other thing that I worked on a lot this week, this week I was just kind of going for the simple knits, the asymmetrical shawl, the seat stitch scarf. And last week you all voted on purple yarn, the purple drops, Andy's it was. The ball bands are up there. Yes, Andy's. And versus the variegated or marled um, Lion Brand Wool Ease, the thick and quick. And the pur solid purple one, because you guys all thought it would, uh, it would just show off the garter stitch a lot better in a solid color, which, of course, solid colors do show off everything the best. And look at this, you guys. This is done. It's maybe not a finished finish because I am going to put a fringe on it, but it's finished. I have to say, I am loving my Q project bags, these wax canvas bags. Love these. And I'm waiting. Cheryl has some canvas that she's going to make some bags out of. So I've already kind of picked my color out. So I'm going to going to order when she gets around to making those I'm going to put my 
<laughs> put my request in. So I did this scarf on eight millimeter needles, some straight needles, and the ball band. The yarn calls for a nine millimeter. I started with a nine millimeter, and it was too loose. With my, I'm a loose knitter, and it just ended up being too loose. So this is long. I wanted something that was going to be really, really long. Not sure which. Okay, I'm not sure which side is the right side on here. Okay, and it keeps going, and here we are at the end. So, um, so here we go. So it is. I. It's. I can't. Um close to 70 inches. It might be a little over 70 inches. Um, but I wanted something that could wrap around and just be super cozy and squishy and warm. And it's um, this one here and it nice and wide, it's seven inches wide, so you can keep it wide, you can fold it over. Super, super wearable and warm. So this Andes, Drops Andes, is a, um, is a Highland wool and alpaca blend, and it is nice. And sometimes Highland wool um, can be rustic because it's not a merino, but it, um, it, it, this to me doesn't feel itchy at all. It's nice and soft with the alpaca in there. So we've got, it's nice and long. So I'm, I'm going to put a fringe on here. I used every bit of this yarn. I, once I started um, adding on the third ball, I did measure out what I needed for my fringe and cut that off and set that aside. So, um, that's got to be close, Susanna. Six feet long, 72 inches. That's got to be close to that. And uh, it's lovely. This yarn is gorgeous. It was lovely to knit with. Um, it's it's just going to be a great scarf. Again, it'll probably go in the gift box at some point. I am going to use it as um, a sample for some beginner knitting classes that I'm working on. And... Um, yeah, so I'm going to put the fringe on because why not? <laughs> why not? Um, so this is, all, this. I mean, this technically is done. If I wasn't going to put a fringe on, it could be done. So I'm going to check this off my whiteboard. This was only last week's project. So which is why I, this is why I picked this project for last week was the the idea of the the you know four weeks of the month sweater number one socks number second week then something like a hat cowl um shawl and then the last week is um something that's hopefully going to get done in a week is my is my thinking so the, yeah exactly 99 percent done yes um, I probably could have put the fringe on, but I, it was it was a beautiful day today, and I went for a walk instead. So, <laughs> but it'll be fully finished next week. But that was that's been my knitting week. I think that's just about it. So the other projects that I didn't work on, so I've got my salty air tea that didn't get any knitting done on it. I do still have my mosaic. Um scarf it's sitting right here so I haven't done I haven't done any more on it since I showed it to you last week just have the start of the yellow the next color change on there um but hopefully this will get some work on it next week or this this week for next week's podcast because it's really fun and I really do like doing the the mosaic knitting um yeah salty or tea I have what else is on my whiteboard? Oh, my cable pillow. It's, um, yeah, hopefully it'll get in the rotation. And the Patton's Croy, this one. I've got this top to work on too. So this will be a super easy, simple one. Basically two rectangles, sew them together is what this is going to be. 
So that will be, that can kind of be fun. So now that I'm getting some of these scarves finished, can put in something like that, that I can just pick up. I just need to figure out um, exactly how many stitches I'm going to cast on. Once I get that figured out, just knit. Stock and knit, back and forth. Super, super easy. So today is April 1st, which means it is Sock Knitting Month in the Fiber Friends podcast group. So I want to do a pair of lace socks, but I have not come up with the sock yarn yet that I'm going to do. Saturday morning, we I was looking, I did a quick search. Somebody looked on Ravelry for me for lacy, like I want lacy, 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 as lacy socks as I can find. And there was one pattern on there, Shetland lace, Shetland ribbed lace, I think is what it was. And they looked really fun. So that I may do. I may do a little more looking around. Haven't totally decided. But that will be next week's cast on because the second week of the month is sucks. So I'm really, really excited and looking forward to working on that. All of these fun things. So what else? What help, What have you guys been working on? Is anybody getting ready for socks for April? Do you have something that's finished? Are you casting anything on? Um, oh, okay. I'm just going to take a look at that. Mary asked, do they fit you? The brown sock that I walked the line, haven't even tried them on. Have no idea. <laughs> Somebody else asked me that somewhere where, oh, maybe when I was at a guild meeting, I had taken the socks to show them. And there, so, yeah, somebody else had asked me that. And I'm like, oh, do they fit? Who would know? I don't know. Probably. Maybe. The first pair was a little short. This pair looks a little longer. So I'm I'm thinking that there's a good chance that they might. I don't know. Um, I was just more knitting them just to be decoration. I don't know if I'll wear them or not. I might just hang them up and just look at them. Um, maybe at some point I'll wear them. Oh, Sherry, you're doing the Mercury socks. Five stitch, five row repeat. Oh, may not be as lacy as you're wanting though. Hmm. Okay, I will look at that. Mercury socks. Bernadette, you cast on the Francis sock for a friend. Nice. Sally, did you ever finish your rust colored socks? No, I didn't. Cheryl casually mentioned that the other day to me. <laughs> No, they're they're somewhere. I'm not even exactly sure where they are. Um, no, but they'll they'll be on. They'll they'll be queued up here to get finished. I I really want to try and get some of these things finished and get the needles back because I'm I'm running low on needles. <laughs> so, can you do magic loop for socks? Yes, you can, Sam. Absolutely. Sally, you started the lime socks for April. Okay, that sounds fun. Don, you've got two pairs of socks and a pair of slippers on the needles. Okay, that is amazing. Uh, so are they all for you, Don, or is or, or is one pair for you, one a gift? Let's see, Lynn. Oh, Lynn, you're working on socks. I love this. Everybody's working on socks. This is so fun. Shorties, perfect. Oh, the Willow Socks by Deb Buckingham. Okay, the Willow Socks. Excellent. Shorty Socks. I mean, does that like April? A April to me, me it, like two projects immediately come to mind. Shorty Socks, lace shawls. That's what I always want to. Well, it's what I want to make make in April. Um, so that's fun. Shorty Socks, perfect. Oh, Nancy started a shawl. You started something about Phoenix shawl. Okay, it, is it lace? Liz, you're on the heel flop of a second stock. Started, oh my gosh, you started your emotional support chicken. You guys, when I was on Ravelry this morning looking for patterns, the emotional support chicken was in in like the, the top searches of, it's had something like 18,000 views or something in like the last 24 hours it was like it was huge um i'm sure it was eight it might have been eight thousand. i don't think so i think it was more like 18 it was a lot it i think it had the most views of any pattern that was on there so 
that's fun. It's it, it's a fun pattern. Jocelyn, you you've got three projects. Oh, you got three projects finished this weekend. And with the check-in on Friday, I should be working on my purple sweater. I might pick up a sock to work on this month. You absolutely should try or pick up a sock. Absolutely you should. Um Cindy, you're knitting your socks. You started, oh, you started late last night using Croy. Oh, what is that chambray color? I don't know. I, I can't think of what color that is off the top of my head. It must be one of their newer ones. That is exciting. Can never go wrong with Croy sock yarn. Dawn, oh, one sock for you, the slippers for me, and one pair for your husband. Perfect. Diane's doing socks and oh, you, I love how Diane and Dawn, you you girls always do like these knit alongs together. That is so fun. Oh, you sent me a picture. Okay, I'll look at it later, Sam. I love the colors. Your color selection is always great. Oh, you both have one slipper done. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, I better I better go open the Ravelry thread then, hadn't I? I was kind of forgetting about that. I don't know why. April 1st. Um, can I finish? Oh, Nikki, can I finish a pair of socks for the fiber chart? Like you mean like, like a, a pair that you've already started? Absolutely you can. Oh no, no. Or do you need to cast on? No, nope. works in progress count too. Absolutely you can finish. Okay, so let's see. Olafson, I'm not sure. I'm probably not mispronouncing that, and I'm sorry. Um, you're making, oh my gosh, you're making an emotional sports chicken as well. I thought I was looking at it. I was all ready to see you're making socks. You're doing the emotional support chicken too. That, oh, hi, Nicole. Um, that is too fun. Okay, so what are you going to do with your emotional support chicken? Everybody who's doing your chickens, is this, are you keeping them? Are you giving them away? Are you going to knit a whole flock? I don't know. I don't know. Toy knitting is not something I do a whole lot of, but they are really, really cute. Oh, Nancy, so your shawl, it's not lace. It's striped with one color to halfway, then another color for the end. Fun. Okay. So are you doing bright colors like for spring or neutral? Oh, blues and gray. Well, Cindy says blue and gray. Fantastic. Sally, I'm a little overwhelmed with three whips. <laughs> you usually just have one or two. That's okay. Three is not that many, Sally. I know. Well, that's okay. Just pick one that's the closest to being finished, then work on it, and then that'll get you down to two. Oh, Jocelyn, you want to make an emotional sport chicken? I know. Like, whoever came up with this, and just the name, right? I mean, if it was just called... I don't know, Betty the Chicken or something. Would it be so exciting? But Emotional Support Chicken. I just like the name just makes you smile, right? Oh, Liz is keeping her chicken. <laughs> oh, so fun. So fun. Louise, this Thursday at Learning Club, can you help me cast on socks? I would love to do that, Sam, for sure. Bernadette, you've knit three of the chickens. Two are for friends having medical procedures. See, and isn't that so nice? Because that would just brighten their day just to, to give them an emotional support chicken. Like, seriously, the name gets me. That's so fun. Oh, Nicole, you're going to give your chicken to my sister. Oh, who lost a friend recently? See, that would nice. That would brighten her day. Susanna, you're making scrubbies. Love it. So are you knitting them or crocheting? And are you using the, um, which scrubby yarn are you using? Hi, Kim. Oh, Kim, you made an emotional support chicken for Christmas as fiddly. Uh, but there's a support video. <laughs> I love that there's a support video for the support chicken. Oh my goodness. That is fun. Nikki, you want an emotional sport chicken too? So cute. I I don't know, you guys. I think you should just cast them on. If you want one, just do it. 
Oh, Nancy, started with chocolate and pistachio, but I'll go chocolate and then darker green. Oh my gosh, those that's going to look so good. Hey, Trish, you started your second pair of Christmas socks. Oh my gosh, you guys, Christmas. Okay, I've just gotten, I've just gotten over Christmas. I haven't started to rethink really about it yet. Okay, so Trish, are these going to be for you or are these going to be for, like, you mean, okay, Trish, wait. Are they Christmas socks as like in Christmas yarn, like red, white, green, or are they socks for Christmas presents? Have to clarify that. Oh, Suzanne, oh, you're using the red heart oh, in your crocheting. Nice. That's fun. So the, the scrubby is going to be for you, Suzanne, or are you getting some to give away as gifts? Jocelyn, Jocelyn wants, wants the, the chicken to freak out her cat. <laughs> Mary, there's a podcast who put a faux fur pom-pom on instead of the comb. Oh my gosh. I would love that. Love that. That would be so fun. Oh, okay, Suzanne. So you also made some that were the cotton and scrubby yarn. So you've got so you got some options going there. No, Sam. <laughs> no, I know for some reason the Croy Ball Band. Does it still say that? You would think they would change that. I know, and I don't know if it's just because the Croy is a little thicker than regular sock, sock yarn. But no, just use a regular sock size needle, like a two point five or two point two five. If you go 3.25, it'll be just way too loose. Sally, you're knitting an emotional support chicken, and I'm almost done. I'm going to keep her too. Okay, are you guys, if you guys are keeping your emotional support chickens, are you giving them names? I think, I don't know. I would name one if I had one. Um. Oh, doing some because they're so quick. Yeah. Well, they're good. They're just, that's a great thing to, the little scrubbies are fantastic because you, people use them, like you can use them yourself and you're right. You can just use up a little bits of leftovers. They're a quick project just to be able to start and finish, especially if you're crocheting. That's fantastic. Oh my God. Okay, Trish, you need to knit five pairs of Christmas yarn. Okay, that is exciting. I mean, just knitting socks for Christmas gifts this early, I mean, that gives you a lot of points for being on the ball and organized <laughs> because <clears throat> not mentioning any names, but somebody else that's here should be thinking about that too. <laughs> but I never do. I always leave it to like November. Um, but that's good. And the fact that you're doing in the middle of Christmas yarn is even more exciting. I love it. Hi, June. Oh, you're late. Oh, that's okay. You're casting on your sock. Forgot what time it was. Well, I'm glad you popped in, Jim. And, oh, well, Liz said the yarn for my current socks is Christmas at the cabin. Liz, you're doing Christmas socks too. You guys are making me so happy. <laughs> Trish, five pairs. So is this your first pair? That's like, that's like evenly, you could space that out till December, couldn't you? Good planning ahead. Um, I'm sorry to take a, oh, yeah, well, you know what, Sam, if hat knitting is just, if it doesn't excite you, then don't do it. No big deal. Move on to socks. Socks are way more exciting anyways. That's okay. And maybe at some point you'll want to come back to hats. Who knows? If you don't, that's okay too. Sherry, you have three chickens on the go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Chewbacca. Um, Hen Solo and Princess Leia. Oh my God. Okay. Sherry, how did you think about these names? That is, that is so funny. That, that is just, it takes it to a whole new level. I love it. Liz, mine has a name. Megshell. Oh, Make Shell Obama. It was a kit. Oh my God. And, and it came with a name. That's hilarious. Oh. Um, let's see. Jocelyn. All the stuffed animals 
Oh, in this apartment have names. The guys give them names. That's funny. I know. We kind of need to name them though, right? Hat did I look that then? Oh, Trish, you're on your second pair. Of, okay. Fantastic. Oh, Trish, you've been thinking about the chickens though? I know. I think you should do it. It would be fun. I know. I know. Well, obviously, because like really, now I now I feel like I need to go back here and look at the homepage on Ravelry. And just see if I might like crazy when I was thinking it was like 18,000 or something. Oh, it's not even there now. Look how quick it changes. Um, but there's a new sweater. Oh my gosh, almost all, all of them except one are different from this morning. That's crazy. How am I? Oh, there it is. Emotional support chicken. But it doesn't tell me now how many views it had. Anyways, it was a lot. So the designer is Annette. Corsino, Corsino. Oh my gosh! I gotta check that. I gotta check out this pattern here. Um, what? So it's knit with worsted weight, in garter stitch, four point five millimeter needle, bottom up, one piece seam, short rows, striped color work, worked flat, and there's a tutorial now available. Life is hard. We all need a chicken to make it all better. This is a um, modification of a pattern by the late um, Bev Galakis for Fiber Trends called Henrietta and Family. You can create your own magical comfort chicken that doesn't need a permit to always be with you. It's lovable and huggable and you don't even have to feed it to love you back. Mine is named Lindsay Lohan. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's so fun. Materials, 200 yards of worsted weight main color, 100 yards of contrast, 10 yards each um, for the crown and beak yards. 13 inch long chicken. If you want a larger one, use chunky or bulky yarn. That, there you go. Safety eyes and polyfill. Okay, what a great, well, she definitely was onto something when she uh, wrote up that pattern. So fun. What? Sherry says there's also emotional support potatoes and emotional support pickles. Well, support potatoes, who wants a potato when you can have a chicken? I don't know. Susanna, you, I have gotten about one third of the stuff in the basement cleared out. Okay. Everybody needs, everybody needs a support pickle. I don't know. Sure. If you want a support pickle, go for it. Okay. I don't think I will be knitting a support pickle or a chicken anytime soon, but I would love to see pictures of all of yours. So post away so I can see them. That's so fun. Okay, so I think I'm going to go to the um, Fiber Friends Ravelry page and I will close the thread for the lace knitting. So if you have anything that you have not entered in for lace knitting, um, do it right now because I'll, I will close that um, sometime tonight, hopefully. And then I will open up the sock knitting thread for all of you speedy knitters who are going to get pair of socks done here in the next couple of days. And, well, if you do, if you're doing slippers, that, uh, that will be a quick project, won't it? Oh my goodness. Everybody needs a square pickle. Yes, Liz. Okay. Yes. I read that tonight. Okay. Yeah. Well, Liz, okay. You do a pickle and I want to see pictures of it. Sam, I just need to practice hat knitting. Oh, you're not getting a hat. Perfect. Well, that's good. Yeah. Take a break, do a pair of socks, come back to hat knitting. Right? Exactly. Anything goes. Oh my goodness, you guys, this has been so fun. I cannot wait to try this yarn. Where did I put it? So Anchors Summer Shirt in this beige. I think it'll be great. I like this. Um, can you read my last comment? Um, what was that? Oh, your last two comments, Sam. Um, they're deleted, Sam. 
Um, anyways, all right, you guys have a fantastic week. It, um, it's going to be a little bit, it feels like a little bit shorter a week. I did not work today. So I'm excited for that. A short work week is always a good thing. An extra day to knit is always a good thing. And I'm going to see what I need, do a little gauge swatching, see what um, size needle I need for this anchor summer shirt. That's a little bit of a tongue twister too. So I'm excited to get this cast on and then work on some other things. I'm going to update my Ravelry or, well, I'm going to work on my Ravelry page. I'm going to update the whiteboard and um, just keep up with everything. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and maybe I'll see what I'd like to do is start right at the beginning and kind of start with the older projects and try to work on those so I can get some of those finished. And right now I would always had always said I wanted to kind of stay at 50%, you know, um, new starts and finishes kind of 50, 50. I'm under the 50 mark right now. So I need to, uh, I need to do something. I need to get work on a few more finishes here. Uh, yes, Sam, I have an easy sock pattern for you for sure. All right, you guys, thank you so much for voting. I'm going to go see if I can find a needle and work on a gauge swatch on this right now. And um, yes, and hopefully I come back with a little bit of this sweater to show you all next week. So happy sock knitting, happy emotional, emotional support chicken <laughs> or pickle knitting, whatever you're working on. Have fun with this week. And Jocelyn and I will be here Friday night because it'll be the first Friday in April. We were both to finish sweaters. So we'll check in Friday night for that. And uh, and then we'll be back here again Monday with something else. Well, it'll be socks. We'll be we'll, You guys will be voting on socks. And uh, we'll see how much I can get done this week. So thanks everybody for voting. Thanks for hanging out here with me tonight. It's been lots of fun chatting with you all. Have a great night and have a good week and get lots of knitting done. We'll see you all Friday night. Good night, everybody.